Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how to create an overlay texture or what you have to pay attention to. And then later on, we're gonna go over each element type in the config creation tool. So first the textures, we're gonna start with buttons. Um, or I should rather say some general general things to watch out for. You have to have a one pixel border around the entire image right here. Right. One pixel above, on the left, to the right and below as well. Um, in between different elements you have to have at least three pixels of space. Um, that is because when input overlay cuts out a specific element and the elements are too close to each other, they will bleed over into each other. So you might get some unexpected results. So make sure there's at least three pixels in between. There's something else to watch out for, for buttons or for a lot of other things. Um, in buttons, we have the unpressed texture at the top and the pressed texture below it. So you can see a little pattern here, each key and then below it is the what it looks like when a key is pressed. And in between pressed and unpressed, we have a three pixel gap, exactly three pixels. The space in between Q and W has to be at least three pixels, but between unpressed and pressed, you have to have exactly three pixels because the plugin will cut out this texture and when you press W, it will go down here and look for the press texture and it needs to, it expects that there to be three pixels exactly. Um, and that's basically all there is for keyboard buttons. The same goes for gamepad buttons. The analog stick and for mouse buttons. So I'm just going to move over to mouse elements now. We have a static texture like this one. This is just a plain image that will be displayed in the overlay for the mouse body. Nothing special here. Then the scroll wheel. We have the neutral scroll wheel. So no scrolling and no clicking. And then next to it, in order, middle mouse pressed, scrolling up, scrolling down. In between, exactly three pixels gap. And they're all on the same height. Because once again, the plugin will use this by default and then move over depending in which state the mouse wheel is. Um, the mouse movement stuff is just plain textures again, there's nothing special here. This arrow will be used to point in the direction the mouse is moved. And this button here, uh, this dot here, will be placed in the middle here and then move wherever you, mo you move your mouse. Next up we have the D-pad. Um, this one's just a bunch of positions in order. Same rules apply, three pixels in between each of those. So this element is actually um, this big. So this is the, the element. And if you load it in OBS, you will basically see this by default. And then it'll switch to these other textures, depending on which D-pad buttons are pressed. So if I press up, it'll display this one. If I press left and up, it will display this one. The order here is important. Nothing else to watch out for except for, you know, space. And then uh, lastly, we have the gamepad ID, this thing here. This is just, if you have an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, this can display the different uh, controller numbers. So if you play a one, player two, and so on. Here, the same thing again, three pixels gap in between. The order is important. Um, and the last one is the 
middle the button press down so on the xbox you have this circle button in the middle of the gamepad that you can press uh, if you don't want that you can just leave this space here empty and that's all there is to it uh, in terms of textures or creating a texture for the overlay one last thing you can mix element types so you can have gamepad buttons and keyboard buttons in the same texture and in the same overlay. Now we're going to move over to the um, config creation. I'm going to start with um, keyboard. So we are just going to switch over to um, Oh, that's looking mighty fine. Whoops. So we're just going to load a texture, start, add a new keyboard button, select it here, like that. Make sure you exactly select it. Do not select the spaces around it, just the exact button. Over here we give it a key code, we can record it, meaning that if I press Q it will automatically give me the key code or you can type it out if you uncheck this. Okay, that's Q. Um, we can also quickly show the texture. So now we have the button Q and this one's just a texture that doesn't do anything. Up next are the mouse elements, mouse button, nothing special, same as the um, as the keyboard buttons, just select the region. In here you can click or you can type. One is the left mouse, two is right and three is the scroll wheel. We're just gonna go right over to the mouse wheel, just down here. It also explains to you what it expects. We select the neutral position, click on OK, scroll up. I can see that if I zoom in, scroll up, down. So it seems like this one's mixed up, but you can. Fix this by switching these in the texture. Um, then next up is mouse movement. A little explanation here. We have two different types. An arrow that points in the direction your mouse is moving or a texture that moves uh, wherever your mouse is being moved in a specific radius. So these are just textures you select set the type to point because we have a, an arrow that points and we can also add a, um, a move, moving texture. So let me first add a plain texture as the background and then add the little dot that moves around. Set it to move, and then you can place it like this. And this, it's not visualized in here, but in OBS, the button, uh, this dot will then move to the left if I move my mouse to the left, and the arrow will point to the left. Up next is the D-pad. There's nothing special here. Just select the first element. Uh, you can just, you can also type this. In this case, it's easier because um, I know the exact dimensions. Click on OK. And now if I still get out my gamepad. And plug it in. Um, We should see this thing moving. There we go. 
So if I go up, it goes up. If I go down, and in between. And that's the D-pad. Lastly, we have the gamepad elements. Just, uh, well, the gamepad button is nothing special, like any other button. Select the unpressed one. And here you can press the gamepad buttons if you have your gamepad connected. This only works in Chrome or Chromium based browsers. Uh, in Firefox, it doesn't work. At least right now. So now we have our X here, and if I press X, this one will be a little bit wonky because I didn't select the texture properly. So you can see I didn't quite do it right. That happens when you either didn't uh, get the spacings right in the texture, the gaps, or if you didn't select the initial texture correctly. But for with this tutorial, it's good enough. So we're going to move over to the analog stick. Technically exactly the same in terms of texture. We just have the analog stick here. And then on our left, we can set the radius in which it moves and <clears throat> which one, the left stick or the right stick. So let's just set this to like 60. Well, that's a little bit much. 60. Click OK. And now if I move my my controller stick around, click it, there you go. And just to demonstrate that this thing is actually just like a normal button, I could also just select A right here and use the A button as a stick. Okay, that's that doesn't matter, it's still my analog stick. Up next we have the trigger which is um, right here. That's the shoulder button, or one of the shoulder buttons. Uh, this one, or this one. Um, once again, you select the unpressed state. Like that. And you can select the side, left or right. And this can either be a button. Okay, so if I, it's either either pressed or unpressed. Or if you wanted to display the progress, you can have it fill up in any of the four directions. So now it's filling up uh, downwards. So if I press it halfway, I think it's clear what this does. You can do it in other directions as well. So if you want to fill it up to the right, you can do that. And that's the trigger type. Lastly, we have the gamepad ID. It's down here. Once again, over here is explained what is expected. We select player one. Um, more or less like that. And then next to it, with a three pixel gap, are player one, two, three, four, and the guide button pressed. The guide button is. Um, this thing in the middle here. Click OK. Currently it's gamepad 1. If I press the guide button down, uh, I guess I screwed up a little bit once again. I didn't get my spacings correctly. You can see a one pixel off set can cause this issue if we quickly fix this. Move it a little bit to the right. OK. That's still not correctly, huh? That looks better. There we go. That's all the element types. And once you're done with arranging them, you can click export as JSON and then you're done.